Hey there, and welcome to my house. This next video is pretty laid back. It's more just hang out with me as I troubleshoot a problem in the number one crossbar. I figure it should hold you over until the next high effort video comes out. So sit back, relax, and let's fix a telephone switch. All right, all calls to uh, something are failing. Let's figure out why. Um, if I can flip the camera around while I'm shooting video, ah, no, I can't. So here's the trouble indication here. This is on the terminating trouble indicator as opposed to the originating trouble indicator. So I know that the failure is happening on the terminating side of the office because that's what's indicating trouble. So the first thing I naturally look at is the progress lamps and it's showing me that there's no LE and that's, tr that's supposed to be true. I know that because I know that. Um, but the scary thing is that there's no TK, and that's the next thing that needs to happen. So why is there no TK? Not really sure. The next thing I tend to look at is the lamps here that indicate the cross points that closed. So the call came in on incoming primary switch one, level zero in this case, and line juncture zero, and we didn't pick a channel. Um, so this tells me that essentially where on the crossbar switch fabric the call went through. Now, there's been all different indications here, not just these, and I wrote them all down to try and get a kind of a pattern to see if there's any equipment in common. And they're really, so the only thing I found in common is line juncture zero, which is actually not that helpful because of the way that this switch works, there's a lot of calls going through line juncture zero and they're not all failing. So just because line juncture zero is common, that doesn't necessarily point to a failure. Um, it just means that the failing calls are all going through line juncture zero, but then so is a bunch of other stuff. So this may not be a good way to diagnose this problem because it doesn't really tell me anything that I don't already know. So let's go back here to the indicator. No TK, that's a problem. The calls, uh, these two are variable, so they don't really point to anything in particular. It's always line juncture zero, but like I said, that doesn't matter um, because non-failing calls are going through this line juncture, so that's not helpful. All right, the next thing I'm gonna look at is up here. I noticed that we don't have, um, we do have an L relay operated, so the marker was able to, to identify the line um, ending, the units digit of the line was units number one, um, but we don't have a line lockout group, so, or a line link group, so that's weird, and we don't have a CA or a CB. So that's super sketchy. Um, that's pointing to something, I don't know. So let's go back and look at the sequence chart. Now the sequence chart is what we go to when we've identified part of a problem, like there might be something wrong, but I don't know exactly where there is something wrong. So here's how to read this. It goes forward in time from top to bottom. So in this direction, things are happening sequentially. And if we zoom in here, um, we can see that uh, LE12 operates as a result of XS5. So this is the cause of this. And uh, XS5 is also the cause of TB, way over here in the number group connector circuit. So XS5 has two ca causes two things. It causes this to happen over here, and it causes LE12 to operate there. That's not our problem, that's just how to read this chart. So things in this 
left and right happen in parallel and things from top to bottom happen uh, like causally, sequentially in this direction. So um, this page, we don't need it. We've already gotten past all this. I know that because I've done this. This isn't my first rodeo. So I'm gonna go to this page, which is where the problem I think actually is. So we notice that the L relay did operate. Um, now, what should happen after the L relay? So as a result of the L relay operating in the marker, all of these relays should be down. So this dash means release and the X means operate. So as a result of L operating, these should release, this should operate, and we should also operate CA or CB. Well, that's interesting. Let's go back here for a second. And we have an L relay has operated, but we do not have any CA or CB indications. And the sequence chart tells us that we should have one of these lamps as a direct result of this lamp here. So now we're starting to narrow down the problem and get a little bit closer. So I think the problem is on this line between here and here. So now we have to go and look at what makes the CA and CB relays operate. Like what's the actual path of the ground that's going to get them to operate. And to do that, we need to check out the list of all the relays and what pages they're on. So there's these lists that tell you where they are. I already know where it is, so I'm going to spare you that. Should be here somewhere. Nope, not you. You! So these are the CA and CB relays. It doesn't show all of them. It's just going to show the first one, the middle one, and the last one. And then you kind of have to fill in the fact that there's going to be other ones in here. It's just, this is a, this is a training school book, so it's not, it's going to be simplified. So we have the CA, didn't get that. And we also didn't get these relays, which I noticed. So that's, this seems to be very related. So let's look, the CA relay on one side of its windings has negative 48, which we call battery. So battery goes through this cross-checking relay and into the winding of CA. And then CA goes out to here through the large connector relays and into this, which represents the number group. And then through the number group, it goes out and it gets a ground from somewhere. So here's the trick on, with this. Um, the number group is very suspicious to me because this is where a lot of cross connections take place. So I don't, I don't actually care what's happening in the rest of this circuit right now. I'm, I'm going to basically stop right here and ask myself, this needs ground through here, from here, and then out over here. Is ground getting to here? But now I'm asking myself an additional question. I wonder Sorry y'all, this is like totally in real time. This is real time troubleshooting. So you're gonna have to walk around with me a little bit. This is the number group. 
And all of these cross connections here are different phone numbers. So the phone numbers are here. This number group can handle up to 700 phone numbers. That's the maximum number, number of subscriber lines that we can have on this number group. There's 700, 600, 500, 4, 300, 200, 100, and 100. That ground that operates the CA relay comes through one of these cross connections. So I bet that the problem isn't with the crossbar switch or the, the switch fabric itself. I bet the problem is with one particular phone number because if it's coming through here, everything that comes through here is one particular phone number. So let's, let's go test that hypothesis. Back at this frame here, the phone number that was dialed is five, one, two, one. All right. Let's punch that number up on here. Five, one, two, one. And hit it. We got L1. We got no lockout group. We got no CA and CB. And we got no TK. Hmm. All right, let's try a different phone number. Let's try five, one, two, oh. Oh, So we got L relay uh, O. We did get a lockout group. We did get a CA. And the progress indicators show that the connection was successful. So it might just be related to the phone number 5121. Now I can test that another way. The phone numbers are in are connected into the marker in blocks of 20. So if it's a problem with the relays that bring the leads from the marker into that number group cross connections, then every block of 20 should have the same problem. The phone's ringing. Away. So there's a bunch of there's a bunch of leads that connect. I don't know. Are my fingers dirty? <laughs> so there's a bunch of leads that connect the terminating marker into the number group and through these big connector relays, and they're always grouped in groups of 20. That's like a crossbar rule uh, for terminating markers. So I theorize that it, if, is it, if it is a problem with the connector relay, that the problem will also occur not only with numbers ending in 2-1, but also numbers ending in 0-1, because that's also a block of 20. Let's see if that's the case. Aha! Aha! Right. So my theory was correct. We got an L relay. We did not get a lockout group. There is no CA or CB. And the progress indication, no TK. So, since the same, the same wires are used for O1 and 2-1, there's some commonality there. It's just 
you know, the group for the oath 20 and the first 20 and the second 20, but at some point those all get condensed down into 20 wires that come out of the marker. I think that it is gonna be here in the marker connector relay somewhere. All right, so we've turned the page and now we're looking at the group of 20 leads that come into the number group. This is that same number group frame. It's just represented a little bit differently, but you'll just have to take my word for it that it is the block relay frame in the number group connector. It's that frame with all the wires on it. And I see that these wires come from come through two relays, a TB relay and an MCD relay. And again, it's not showing you all of the wires, it's just showing you O and 10, but really they're labeled O through 19, but it's just gonna show you these two as like a, you know, a shorthand representation and you have to fill in the fact that there's actually 19 of these wires here. It's showing you two. So the number that we wanted that wasn't working was 5121 and also 5101. Now they're grouped in groups of 20. So from 0 through 19 is 20 block 0 and from 20 to 39 is 20 block one, and from 40 to 59 is 20 block two, and so on. So we know that 5101 will be in that 20 block relay, and 5121 bet you can guess, will be in that 20 block relay right there. And both of these are not working. I don't think that more than one 20 block relay has failed simultaneously. That's very unlikely, but we can check that. So let's dial 5121 and we want NC1 because it's the, it's the one that is our problem. Whether it's 01 or 21, it's the one that's our problem. So we want to test NC1. And on the 20 block relay, that will be terminal number zero is zero. So we can infer that NC1 will be terminal number one. Let's go check it. Oh, I should probably make sure that my number is set up correctly. Okay, it is. Good. So there's a lot of inference happening here. Oh no, where'd I put the remote? Damn it. So there's a lot of uh, inference happening here. There's like a lot of stuff I just assume to know. And that's really because I've been doing this for a while. And I often tell visitors, you know, they say, how'd you learn this? You know, how'd you learn this stuff? Um, years, years of solving problems. I have learned what it is safe, uh, what's safe to infer and just some general knowledge about how this machine thinks about the universe because it is a machine. And being a machine, it thinks about the universe, this one, yes. It thinks about the universe in a certain way. It has a certain 
viewpoint from which it understands itself. And one of the characteristics of that viewpoint is that the terminating marker always thinks about things in blocks of 20. So I do too. So I have put my probe, uh, the other end of my probe on battery. See the sparks? I'm touching ground. If there's ground there, I'll see sparks and I'll hear a click. All right, so I'm gonna put my little probe on the terminal for 21, which is right here. Terminal number one of this relay, O, one, two, three, so on. And the next row is 10, 11, 12, and so on. And then 21, 22, 23, and so on. So anyway, terminal number one, run the test and see if I hear a click. Nope. No click. That means that ground isn't getting to the 20 block relay. And if ground doesn't get to the 20 block relay, then it's not gonna make it through all of those cross connections to operate that CACB relay in the marker. So if it feels complicated, it is, but what, we're, what we want is we want ground to be getting into this relay, then down there through all those cross connections and then back into the marker to operate that CACB relay. We were able to surmise by deduction that it's a problem with phone numbers ending in one, and we tested that because we tried 21 and 01, and it's always happening. We then proved that by poking the contact behind this relay, looking for ground on the contact that represents 21. And I asked the marker to do its thing and I didn't see a ground there. So what we have to do, what we have to do is go one step up the chain. All right, we know it's not getting here, so let's find the kink somewhere upstream of the hose or where we are in the hose. Time to go for another walk. You know, I often envy people like, you know, YouTubers who just sit at a desk and talk. It's like, it must be, uh, a lot easier to shoot a video just sitting at a desk and talking about stuff. Not that there's anything bad about that. I love them, they're awesome. But like, you just can't do this here. This is all like walking around and like putting iPhones on ladders precariously. It's just the nature of this place. So, the next stop, we just tested the TV relay. The next stop is the MCD relay. And uh, we want number one. So if number zero is 40, number one will be contact number 41 on the MCD relay. So let's take our test equipment and go to that relay. But Sarah, how do you know where that relay is? I went to crossbar school. No, I didn't really. I didn't go to crossbar school. I just, um, I've been doing this for a while. Okay. Um, so here's the MCD relays. There's MCC there, MCA, and MCB, MCD. Um, when they installed this switch, uh, back in the 80s here in the museum, if they were using something, they painted it red. So this is painted red because 
this is the one they were using. Not any of these MCD relays. Um, the red isn't really so helpful anymore because I have since bought up a lot more equipment, so you can't really trust that the red thing is the only thing being used. But in this case, it, it's the red thing. Okay, so put you on battery. Click, click, ground. Sparks. All right, so if we look at terminal 41 here, and I run the test. I hear a click. See those little sparks? Okay, that means that the ground from the marker is getting here. Remember, we're upstream of where we just were a minute ago. So it is getting to this point. But if I move my little test set from battery over to ground, and if I, instead of listening for ground, I'm now gonna be the source of ground. This is just a big ground pokey right now. So if I stick ground on there, I'm just basically like asserting it, I'm forcing ground to be on this lead, and I run it, doesn't work. So ground is getting here. I'm positive of that now. But even when I force a ground here, it's not leaving here and making its way to that end of the number group, the block relay frame. What if I, what if it's a dirty contact? What if I do this? No, it's not a dirty contact. It doesn't matter where I put the ground. Um, not working either way. So there is a broken wire or something between the back of this relay and the input side of that, of the number group. It's technically called the block relay frame. Now it's just the find the broken wire challenge. One of these wires is broken. None of those. One of these wires is broken. One of these wires is broken. Uh, MCC, MCD. Uh, let's look for number 41. It's that one with the red green wire on it. Oh, I'm trying to point to it, but I can't. It's that one. Doesn't look broken. Hmm. Interesting. So all of those wires are banjoed across. Here. And hmm, this looks pretty janky. What's going on here? This here is the way out of this frame. This uh, this kind of semi jankiness here. I wouldn't be surprised if something was wrong with this. But what? What is it? We're back at the number group again. Um, at the block relay frame, back here. And on the back of this little terminal strip is where the wires come in from over there. So we went, we took a step forward and now I'm, I'm narrowing down the problem there is um, the wires from that painted red relay that I showed you come in on the back of this terminal strip. Um, I can show you. Am I sticking the phone back there? There they are. Yeah. And 
41 is the wire we're hunting, and it's that one right there. So I have put this guy on, uh, on battery, sparks, and I'm gonna listen to see if ground is coming in on this terminal. Yes. So the signal is getting to at least here. It only needs to go from here like one foot. It needs to go from here to right there. So we have just narrowed by like process of elimination, we've narrowed down the problem to like one foot of space. It's right here. And just to prove that to myself, I have attached my probe to ground, no click, and I'm going to just put, I'm going to force uh, ground, whoops, sorry, sorry, I'm going to force ground on this terminal back in here, number 41. Nope. So I think, ah, selfie mode. I think that the problem is between here and here. Somewhere between here and here. That's pretty easy to diagnose from here because um, there isn't that much going on in this space. Well, I mean, there's stuff, but you know, it's a much smaller space than somewhere in this entire machine. Let's go back there and see what's going on. So when they designed this equipment, uh, they they kind of assumed, I'm gonna get a drink of water, hang on. When they designed this equipment, they designed it with the assumption that the people who would be troubleshooting it are trained, right? Like, so just how you know how to troubleshoot a computer when the computer's not behaving, the people who worked on this had certain assumptions or certain information about these machines that made sense when they were misbehaving, right? And it seems like a lot, and it is. But, like, it just takes a familiarity with it. And like, you think about how many years did it take you to get good at the thing you're good at and how many little um, secrets do you know about the thing that you're good at whether it's computers or cars or whatever, skiing you know all sorts of things that like maybe I wouldn't know because you spent so many years learning it. It's the same thing with this give me a sec alright so we're going to go ah, carrying a camera around my arm extended if I was cool, I'd get a selfie stick. Um, we're gonna go back there to the same place and see if we can, well, first find a ladder. Oh, there's one. Right where I want it, too. We're on the back of the block relay frame. I left the remote control here because I'm smart. And number, uh, well, that's not right. That's, that doesn't make any sense. That shouldn't be like that. 41? Let's see, oh, oh, to five. So this is 50, that's 51, this is 41, hmm, aha, it's a bad solder joint, because I poked it, and if I run it now, go, it works. 
How do I know it's working? Because I can hear it. It sounds different when it works. So what I have to do is come back here, one day clean up these wires. I didn't, I didn't do this. I'm not responsible for whatever is going on here. Um, reflow the solder on this guy and it'll work again. Again. Now it's working now. It's working just fine, but you know what's gonna happen. It's gonna, it's gonna break again. Probably on a Sunday when we're giving a tour. So just to be, by the way, I put a note here for anybody who walks back here. Big ouch. Be careful. There's lots of big ouch here. Big ouch up to and including, um, you're going to have a very bad day. I know that because it bit me like five times before I decided like maybe I should be careful. And I had a very bad day. Um, okay, so let's test five, one, two, one. Hey, all right. So we've got our L relay one. By the way, you can see they're in um, blocks of 20, 0 through 19. Um, we've got our line lockout group and we've got CA9. It really could be any one of these as long as we get one. And when we go down here, our progress leads show that, yes, we are in fact completing the call all the way to release. Um, these lights look really weird right now because the flash is still on. There we go, flash off. Um, they still look weird on camera, but they don't look that weird to my face. Um, progress all the way to the end. So what did we do? Well, we got a trouble indication. So that was the machine's way of telling us that it was sad about something. We then took the trouble indication and we did like a very, very basic diagnostic on it. Like um, there are lights on, what are the most, what are the scariest looking of those lights? That's usually you start with the progress indication. Like how far did you get? Um, because just like with trouble cards, The, the marker progress indication tells you what it was, what exactly it was trying to do when it failed. Like, I was trying to access X, Y, Z, and then you could make an informed decision. Um, we got the progress indication. We looked at what parts of the switch it was using, but that wasn't really helpful because um, the parts of the switch were different every time, except for the line juncter, which if you remember, the line juncter didn't really matter because I knew that successful calls were using line juncter zero, so it didn't really help us. Next thing we looked at was the fact that we were missing uh, the CACB lamp, and that kind of pointed to the number group slash block relay frame as a source of trouble. Now. Everything that happens on the number group frame is specific to a particular line, or at least specific to a group of 20 lines. Um, so that got me thinking more along the lines of, this isn't a problem with a crossbar switch or something, this is a problem with a particular cross connection or, or something going on in the number group. And when we looked at the diagram, that CACB operate path seemed to confirm that. So we went over the number group and we tested um, the actual line that was having a problem, it was 5121. And we found that, huh, there should be a ground getting to this point and there isn't. 
that's weird. And from there, we're able to just use the schematics to work our way backwards to the point at which the ground was showing up. We worked, we went up the chain until we found the ground. We said, ah, it's there. And then we worked our way slowly back this way along the chain until we found a place where the ground was showing up but not doing anything. And we were able to narrow it down to something about that big. And when you get something about this big, you can just start looking at individual wires because there's only so many wires in this much space. And we found that it was a bad solder joint on the back of a terminal. And the way I found it was a bad solder joint is I just poked it and it started working again. So the fix is gonna be just to go ahead and quickly reflow that solder, which I'll do right now. So anyway, thanks. Um, I know that this video isn't like the super high production value stuff that I've been putting out in last year. Um, I'm gonna do more of those. Uh, to be honest, we've just been busy with being open to the public and like the renovations that are happening around here and a lot of stuff's changing for the better. So I've had, uh, I've had trouble like actually sitting down and writing a script and doing all like the post production need to do, but I'll do it. I promise. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.